Diary of Wimpy Kid was basically the Bible of our childhood. You couldn't escape this thing if you were a child born in the last 10 or 15 years. How long has it been going on? My point is, Diary of a Wimpy Kid is a pop culture icon and has created the living god, Jeff Kinney, who we all look up to and praise every single day. Thank you. But all joking aside, this book series is gigantic and it's actually going on its 14th book. Which begs the question, guys, how on earth is Greg Heffley still in middle school? Or is he? See, I tried to do the Vsauce thing. I don't think it really panned out that well, but I tried to do it. No, but for real though, Greg Heffley has been in middle school since literally 2007 when the first book dropped. I don't know about you guys, but when that book came out, I wasn't even close to middle school and now I'm graduating high school. Why is Greg still stuck behind? Greg, are your grades not good, man? What's wrong, buddy? Now this is a serious question and I really wanted to work hard to answer it. I mean, there has to be some legitimate reason why Greg Heffley's still in middle school. You could sit here and say, it's just a book series Nemo, he's just a fictional character. Grow up, move on, get a real job. And to that I'd say, Dad, how did you find my YouTube channel? I believe there's legitimate science and research in the fact that Greg Heffley is still in middle school for a very specific reason, and I have a lot of evidence, a lot of evidence. Like, I literally spent a lot of hours researching this. So guys, let's all collectively delve deep and answer the question, how is Greg Heffley still in middle school? Let's start with the timeline. Greg Heffley has been in middle school in our years since 2007, but we can't count it like that. The books work in their own time span. Some books cover years, some books cover just months at a time. So in order to really find out in their years how long Greg Heffley has been in middle school, we'd have to make some sort of like ultimate timeline to show which books took place on which months and so on and so forth and I did that. So let's take a look at what I consider the unofficial diary of one Kid timeline. The first book, the first one, takes place the first year of middle school. Alright, a whole year of middle school in the can with one single book. One fell swoop. But then we have the year of seventh grade, okay? Seventh grade stretches over the course of three books, so he kind of really upped the ante. Roger Rules really takes place in the sort of fall winter era, picking up with the last straw, which goes into summer, which is picked up by dog day. So already it's kind of bizarre. Greg went from having one diary for the whole year to needing three full diaries to catalog his life. So at this point, it's eighth grade, the last technical year of middle school. At this point in time, it makes total sense for Greg Heffley to still be a middle schooler. He's just a little baby boy. But this is when it starts to get a little trippy. We go from him needing one journal to five whole journals. Now, either Greg Heffley has unleashed his passion for writing and drawing, or not to jump to conclusions that he's relying more and more on these journals as a sort of escapism? I mean, if you really think about it, every Diary of Wimpy Kid book is just a kid bitching about his problems, however small or big they may be. So as we see over the course of his middle school years, his teen angsty years, he's using these journals as an outlet for all of, all of that teen angst and everything he's going through. This is when middle school should be over for Greg Heffley. Mathematically speaking, this is when his middle school experience should have ended, and it just doesn't. Instead, it keeps on going. So this right here, I knew this book was important. This book mattered. This book meant something. Something had to have happened in the long haul that created more middle school adventures for a boy who should be in high school by now. So I dug deep, did some research. I read the book. What I found is pretty amazing. I believe that diary of a wimpy kid, the long haul, Greg Heffley, fortunately dies. So in the book, there's a family called the Beardos. They're apparently weird. Uh, it's hard to really gauge what's going on. They just see them throughout their vacation. And they seem like weird characters overall. They actually serve as the main antagonist of the book. And I'm sorry, um, th th do you know any other Diary of Wimpy Kid book having a main antagonist? This isn't the fucking Avengers. I mean, sure, Greg had problems. You know, he had problems with Roderick and he's gotten in more fights with Rowley than I think anyone could have imagined. But I digress. I started wondering, wait a second, who are the Beardos? What's going on here? What does this have a meaning outside of the literal book? I started to read between the lines. I started doing some research. And I have one word for you, the Mafia. I I believe the Beardo family is based off of the Boyardo, specifically Richard Tony Boy Boyardo, the famous Mafia gang family member. That's right, there was an actual crime boss Mafia family called the Boyardos that were pretty prominent and are pretty famous. But then I was thinking, well why would Jeff Kinney put the Mafia in his book? Well, I started thinking, what are Jeff Kinney's motives at all? What has he said more often than not in any other interview? So I wanted to create a character who was more like I was. So in a sense, these books are kind of autobiographical. So he's not shy to putting personal experiences in a Wimpy Kid book. So why would Jeff Kinney have ties 
to the Mafia, this is where it gets pretty deep. I did a background check on the Kinney last name to see where they were really from. If they were from Italy, then I really had my silver bullet, then that would have proved that Jeff Kinney was in the Mafia. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Turns out the Kinney family is from Scotland originally, but spent a lot of their time in the US, a majority of their time actually. But you know where a lot of the Kinney family resided? More than 10% lived in New York. Where is there a more famous place for Mafia crime than New York City? This was it. This was my connection that linked Kinney to the Mafia that proved my theory. And I knew I was really onto something. Because when I tried to do a background check for the Boyardo family, I found their Ancestry.com account locked. Almost as if they were hiding something. Like if someone was this close to the truth, they'd never truly be able to get to it. And who would have the power to lock a website as big as Ancestry.com? Someone powerful and influential, like Jeff Kinney, who was featured in Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People of the Year list. This is a man who holds a lot of the cards. He can do anything. I mean, listen to how he talks about family road trips in general in this interview. I think every family road trip of more than about three hours is a nightmare family road trip. Sounds like you have a lot of baggage, Jeff. Everything's fitting together. All these pieces are coming together. Don't you see? So Retro Nemo, how does this tie into the other books, you idiot? If Greg Hackley's dead, why are there still books, you idiot? First of all, it's really mean. But second of all, I hear your pain, okay? But that's the thing. When Greg Hefley died, the series just pivoted what it was about. It was no longer just about the middle school adventures of Greg. It was about somebody who died and the seven stages of grief that followed. Let's take a look at the next book, directly after The Long Haul. Diary of Wimpy Kid Old School. Its color? Completely black. This marked the death of Greg Hefley. I mean, how did you go from all these colorful covers and all these happy little pictures to pitch black? This book represents Greg's death. Him looking at old technology is him reflecting on his past life and everything he had and he's losing. There are so many clues in old school pointing to the fact that Greg is dead. The very first page shows Greg in a casket being viewed. There's other little clues throughout the book, like a throwback to when he found the Mafia base, even receiving notes from the Mafia. And then there's that strange ambiguous page that reads, Welp, I'm dead. I died. This is it. I'm dead now. My character died. Greg is dead. How do you explain that, skeptics? I'm telling you, the answers are here. You just have to look. It even explains why Rowley is so stupid and dumb because he's perpetually stuck as a middle schooler just like Greg. Meanwhile, out in the real world, Rowley's probably becoming like a Chad or something. Probably started playing football and he's probably got a girlfriend. I don't know. But in Greg's purgatory world, he stays dumb and stupid forever. His own personal hell. And I know you're thinking, there's no way this theory has any more legs. Well, it does. The first stage of grief is shock, okay? Look at Greg Hefley on the cover of Double Down. That face of pure shocked expression. Look how much weight he has to carry knowing that he's dead now. Well Nemo, that was kind of a stretch. Okay, I'll do you better. The next stage of grief is denial. The next book in the Wimpy Kid series, Diary of Wimpy Kid, The Getaway, in which Greg and his family literally pack all of their things and get on a plane and fly away to some tropical island to ignore their problems. It's literally denial. Even on the cover, it looks like he's in denial. He's getting on this airplane to leave away this false truth. It gets weirder. The next stage of grief is anger. The next book, The Meltdown. I mean, come on! <laughs> now, it's kind of unclear from here because the next one's Rowley's book. Is that a spinoff? Does that count? But the next stage of grief is bargaining. It almost seems like Jeff Kinney's bargaining with creativity. The next stage is testing and so far the only thing we know about the book is that the fake cover has like a jail ball on it. I don't know. Maybe he's gonna go to jail to test that. But the point is, it could keep going on. We have to wait for this next cover to come out. But from here on out, this series really has just been about a boy learning to accept his death. An unfortunate death at the hands of the Mafia. And it makes sense that he dies in the long haul because that movie they made off of it represented the death of all of happiness and our childhoods. Now Jeff Kinney has said in interviews that he just decided at a certain point Greg's a cartoon character and he could just be a cartoon character, age doesn't matter. But I don't think it's that easy. And I think Jeff knows we know that too. He left us these clues on purpose. Something a lot more sinister is lurking behind the Wimpy Kid series. Something even more sinister is currently happening in it. Whether or not you believe this theory, completely up to you. But guys, the evidence is there. You just have to look at it. Well, it looks like that's all the time I have, but I want to know what you guys think about this theory. Do you think it's true? Do you think it's not? Do you think that my movie kid video is better than Salty DK Dan's? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to consider helping out the round table, you can support us on Patreon or become a member of the channel where you get exclusive access to scripts and avatars, guys. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, please. I'm trying to make this a series. If you enjoyed this video, genuinely share it and subscribe to the round table for more great cartoon content, guys. I'm Nemo, this is a Conspiracy, and I'll see you next time.